viewers and subscribers and welcome back again like i told you Tinubu have succeeded he has succeeded in placing nigeria where it deserves the hall of shame and ridicule among community of nation no wonder nobody takes him serious and people try to avoid him whenever possible because he's not in the class of leaders those you can call leaders that emerge from the people he has succeeded in imposing himself upon nigerians but had failed in winning the legitimacy from nigerian people and the rest of the world just like we witnessed recently liberia had their own elections and judge Ware had come out to already congratulate his opposition despite being the president liberia's president george Weir conceded election defeat on friday following a tight race for the presidency and that means former vice president joseph boakai is set to take the reins in a second round of voting, Boakai was leading with 50.9% on Friday, with nearly all the ballots counted. Votes obtained 814,212. That's a stark contrast to the last election in 2017, when global soccer legend Weir, buoyed by a wave of hope, trounced Boakai in the second round with 62%. But many have grown disillusioned with Weir since then, due to a lack of progress on his promises to stamp out corruption and raise living standards. Boakai's supporters danced in the streets on Friday night. I'm so glad today to tell Liberian people thank you very much. Boakai does, however, now inherit major national challenges. Poverty levels are high in a country still recovering from two civil wars and the Ebola epidemic that killed thousands. You see, they have their own electoral commission, which he congratulated for conducting free and fair election under him. He didn't snatch ballots, but he didn't tell them to run with it, snatch it. He didn't use intimidation to suppress Liberians from voting. Those who he feels will not vote for him. No, he didn't. And there is nobody that is going to court. That is why this woman, when she came to Nigeria, she ridiculed the Nigerian judiciary and the INEC. My Excellency Peter Obi, former executive governor of Anambra State. I don't even need to say, I've just gotten information that just my photo with him is trending in Malawi like crazy. <laughs> to be requested by America to lead the observer team of NDI and IRI. I don't know why, but they just felt this African woman will lead this observer team. While I was here, Arise Broadcasting Channel asked to interview me. And one thing I learned for the first time in Nigeria, the question that came from the anchor was uh, what about vote buying in Malawi? And I said, what is that? <laughs> because distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I had never heard about vote buying in my life. Where I come from, the last elections of 2020, the sitting president used the TPEX to change figures our award-winning judiciary nullified the elections. <laughs> Distinguished letter. So when I went home, being interviewed how Nigeria was, I told them about this question, and Malawians were abused. We learn every day. Vote by. What a shame. And you think you can amount to anything in the eyes of the world, especially we Nigerians, the ordinary people. The politicians, they may not feel it, but we, the ordinary people, will be the ones to suffer it. Go to any country, you will amount to nothing. No matter even if you have their passport, you will not amount to nothing in their eyes. Yes, because they know you are coming from a dungeon. 
uh, people worse than animals in the forest. Yes, we live like animals. In fact, what we are living like in this country is survival of the fittest. The, jung, the, the law of the jungle is what applies here. Eat or be eaten. Every man to himself and God for all of, all of us. That is the kind of country we have become. Because we have a bunch of Nigerians who have decided to support evil. And some of them say they are not interested in the political revolution. Thank God some Nigerians who needed to our voice came out. Yes, we know we were beaten down by the impunity of this system. But yet, it is in our hands to say enough is enough. Because the power of the people is greater than those in power. Let me talk him. Let me talk him. Just like the Malawian president stated in his own statement. I know that there will be some who created this mess that I'm now cleaning up who will be the loudest in calling me names, claiming that I am the problem, and calling on citizens to attack me. But I'm not intimidated by that. I'm here to serve Malawians. And to do so, I'm prepared to do things that are painful as long as they are the right things. The most, the most painful thing by far has been the recent devaluation of our currency to correct the false value of the kwacha based on nothing and rebuild true value in the kwacha based on production of exports. I know that this decision has caused a lot of pain and I know that all of us now have to make big adjustments in spending so that we can prioritize those areas that are most productive and stay the course until our economy becomes productive and profitable again. In making those painful adjustments, I myself have to lead by example. This is why effective immediately all of my international trips between now and the end of the fiscal year, beginning with my trip to COP28 at the end of this month, are canceled. By extension, I'm putting a freeze on all public funded international trips for all public officers at all levels, including those in parastatals, until the end of the financial year in March. In fact, all cabinet members currently abroad on public funded trips must return to Malawi with immediate effect. Any travel deemed absolutely necessary by anyone during that period must be submitted to my office for my personal authorization. Secondly, I order that all fuel entitlements for cabinet ministers, principal secretaries, Directors and all members of senior management of public institutions should be, cut, uh, should be cut in half with immediate effect. Thirdly, until further notice, I order the Secretary of the President and Cabinet to circulate to all public institutions a criteria for local trainings and local travel that will be acceptable, as well as a cap on how much of their budgets can be spent on, allow on allowances for such trainings and trips. By doing this, I am effectively ending the practice of draining public coffers to spend on allowances for useless activities. You see, he, this, is, this is the kind of leaders we want in this country. Far from what we have today. Very far from what we have today. Let me just keep it. Nigerian people, if it is you that I'm talking to, Irrespective of where you're coming from, whether you're electricity or your religion, you will now see and realize that bad governance, no, they hear any language. You don't belong to any ethnicity. He doesn't even affiliate himself with any religion. Ego hit all of us equally. And most especially those who are not from my side, I can tell you for free. No be we from the southeast go so far. This is the hard truth you have to deal with. Because no matter how bad it is, we have that ingenuity to survive. I just hope that our counterparts, the Oduduas, the Arewas, will be able to survive 
this in the next 80 years. <laughs> we are just starting. What's your take on this? Drop it on the comment section. I'm signing out. Bye-bye for now.